all, the topic today is invisible disabilities. And my guest today is the uh, vice president and executive director of Invisible Disabilities, Jess Stainbrook. Jess, welcome. Thank you, Dee. It's great to be here and uh, excited to talk about, you know, helping people that are living with invisible disabilities. You know, Jess, you're a busy guy. I was looking over your your bio on the Invisible Disabilities website, and you've had quite a career, Jess, in media and television broadcasting. You uh, you're a podcaster yourself, and uh, oh my goodness, you've won eight Emmys and. You have been very instrumental in, in production and direction of major motion pictures, sports programming. And oh, and if that's not enough, Jess, you are also an assistant professor at uh, Colorado Christian University. Did I get all that right? I do have a few things that are going on. And I keep <laughs> all of those balls in the air somehow. And, um, but they all seem to overlap, which, which is, helps everybody. Well, I'm broadcasting live from Williston, North Dakota. And where are you in the world? Uh, with, in the Invisible Disabilities Association is based out of Colorado. Um, and so I actually live here in the Denver metro area. Oh, beautiful. I'm sure it's, it's just beautiful there. What's the weather like today? Oh, my goodness. Well, classic Colorado, you know, we're kind of wrapping up winter, which means that it might be 60 degrees today, but we could get four feet of snow tomorrow. <laughs> We've got a little bit of weather coming our way, too, here in North Dakota. We are so over this never ending terminal winter of 2023 and ready to move on to spring. And, you know, actually, I've got a brother that lives in and his family live in Loveland, Colorado. Are you familiar with that area? Yeah, of course. And I visit as much as I can. Well, Jess, today we're talking about invisible disabilities. And right off the bat, Jess, the first question I got to ask is, what is an invisible disability? Sure, of course. And that's a really good question. Um, so an invisible disability really is something, or a disability that somebody has that isn't recognizable by the use of some type of assistive device. So for instance, a wheelchair, a walker, uh, maybe a mobility cane or hearing aid could be, uh, you know, a, a dog, you know, a service dog or something like that. Um, and so, you know, that can manifest itself in lots of different ways. It might be something like MS or fibromyalgia or, um, you know, diabetes, epilepsy. It could be a chronic or, or a, um, uh, a neurological condition or a mental health condition. So there's lots of different things that qualify. It might be chronic uh, illness or pain. Um, it could be physical. It could be neurological. But again, this is wide range. Um, and, and so our goal through the Invisible Disabilities Association is to help raise, raise awareness and to provide different resources. And, you know, most recently, the past couple of years, we've actually been uh, very active in getting different legislation passed um, to help different uh, situations for people that are living with invisible disabilities. And some of that wraps around the idea of, you know, uh, first responder or law enforcement interaction. And I'm sure you'll ask some questions about that. And I could talk more mm -hmm. about that. But we're excited for things like, you know, our ID card that anybody can get that's got a picture on an emergency contact. But the idea is to utilize the symbol to represent people that live with invisible disabilities. And that doesn't, um, that doesn't take away the use of the wheelchair icon. That represents people that need accessibility, right? You need a bigger space to park to get a wheelchair out or something like that. We're really trying to move forward and, uh, and utilizing this symbol so that people with invisible disabilities have something that they can say, hey, there's something you can't see and, and it might require some type of accommodation. Now that symbol on that card that you were holding up, would you hold that up once again, please, Jess? Uh, that is your logo. That's, it, the, logo that's the that, logo? It's a logo that we've developed um, and it's protected with trademarks so that when other government and government agencies or different groups want to utilize it, um, that it is protected. 
right? So it's something that's not just off the internet. Um, so like, for instance, when we do our legislation and you um, can get the ability to have this symbol put on your driver's license, again, that would be a way to have official recognition that you have some type of invisible disability. Yeah, that's, that's why we're utilizing that symbol. So what has to be done, Jess, to get that uh, voluntary disability ID card? Is that the correct name? Okay, what has to be done? You said in the, in the legislature, what all kinds of legal hoops and all that do you need to you know, jump through to get all that done and, and how soon? Sure. Well, so we did COVID kind of exposed a lot of this stuff for everybody living with invisible disabilities. And we had been underway in creating legislative efforts um, to get passed into law. Again, the ability to use this symbol that people could voluntarily choose to have it put on their driver's license or another government ID. Um, again, which would be an official recognition. Well, when all those things got shut down during COVID um, that we kind of heard a big outcry from our constituencies to say, hey, we still need something. What can we do? And so we actually created what I would call the grassroots version that you can go online to the invisibledisabilities.org website and you can order one of these and have it um, you know, shipped to you that you can utilize. Now, obviously we're in the, the process of raising awareness so that people recognize what that symbol means. So for instance, you know, we've got a, a bunch of different countries that we're working with across the world, the UK, South Africa, um, Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan, that are all utilizing it in, in some form or fashion. Um, and then we've got some states here in the United States that have passed it into legislation and are utilizing it. Alaska was the first state. Um, Colorado was this next state. Utah has put it into place. Well, we're working with folks in Alabama, Pennsylvania, Florida, and a bunch of other states as well to get things uh, moving in that realm. So there's a couple of different ways, again, that people can utilize it. One, getting the ID card that they can wear on their own um, if they're having a tough day. The whole idea behind it is to say that if somebody sees you wearing this, hopefully the next question is, how can I help? Um, and same thing if, if you're in one of the states where you can utilize getting it onto your driver's license or government ID. That's usually not a very difficult process once the legislation has been passed. It literally is an application no different than renewing a license or a government ID. So folks can go ahead and get that now. They can. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. In, in the states where we have it going, so Colorado, Utah, Alaska, um, they do have some symbols that are in use in some different in, in other states. But again, what we're trying to is to standardize it so that everybody recognizes one symbol mm -hmm. And we're all, you know, heading toward the right direction. We did originally, when we started talking about this, um, we went to the Homeland Security folks and basically got approval for the symbol so that um, when it does make it onto a driver's license, it becomes part of that real ID identification that you would need at an airport or something like that. You said one of the main goals of your organization is creating awareness. And that's why I want wanted you to come on the program to come on. Just say it with me today is to help create awareness. And and as I was looking uh, again, going back to your bio and I, you have dyslexia. Correct. I do. Yeah. And you have dyslexia. Your father had epilepsy or has epilepsy. Your wife has food allergies. So. Invisible disabilities have directly impacted you and your family. Is that kind of what uh, in, inspired you to get involved with this organization? And, and also, Jess, um, talk, about, talk about some of those invisible disabilities that folks are dealing with. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, IDA, which is the short name we like to call it, Invisible Disabilities Association, it got started way back in 1996. So it's been around for a while and it started out of, you know, Wayne and Sherry Cannell uh, launched it back then when Sherry was diagnosed with MS and progressive 
uh, progressive MS and Lyme disease. And so she was struggling through some things where it really, you know, there were days she couldn't get up and get moving. And, you know, she was doing modeling and actress and, and some theatrical work and different things like that. And, um, you know, she came home one time with when Wayne was there and said, gosh, I tell people about this thing. And, and, and the first response is, but you look fine. You look good. Right. Um, she said, I feel like I'm invisible. Like I have this invisible disability and that, and that, statement stuck. Um, and so from there forward, they had really launched the nonprofit just under the guise of saying, hey, we're struggling with this. Maybe we can help others figure out what it's like. Um, I got involved. I met uh, Wayne probably 15 years ago. Um, and I had a nonprofit, or I still do, that helps different nonprofits with video work and creative work and marketing and websites and things like that. And so, you know, we started helping them uh, document their galas and the speeches that were happening, the awards that were being given. And just again, at this bigger awareness standpoint and getting that stuff up online to help them out. Um, and about five years ago, uh, you know, Wayne and I were talking about some things and, you know, it just seemed like uh, I can remember asking Wayne, like, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up kind of a thing? And, you know, he said he wasn't sure and, but they really needed help. And I said, well, how can I help? And he's like, oh my gosh, I can't afford you. And I'm like, well, I'm not asking you if you can afford me, I'm asking you if you need help. And so it really moved me into helping uh, grow the nonprofit and to, create different programs that are helping people. Again, the legislative things we're working on. We've got a thing coming up that we're launching for the first time in May um, called the Walk and Roll, which is a, an opportunity to kind of do your own walking and running to raise funds. Um, you know, you've seen that happen around a bunch of different disabilities. So, you know, you can sign up for that to, to support different people. Um, but again, the whole idea behind it was to kind of serve as the front porch of if somebody learns something about themselves or they're dealing with something and they're not exactly sure what to do, um, usually they'll they'll end up at our website and we start the conversation. And, and, you know, if we find out somebody has MS, our goal is to introduce them to the MS folks, right? The MS society and get them specific help and, and to help meet the needs that they're going through. And that might be as somebody who is, um, has been diagnosed themselves, or it might be somebody serving as a caregiver for an older parent or a child or something like that. You know, um, somebody has been diagnosed with, with, um, uh, autism or something like that. And so, you know, that's something where we want to be able to help people. And, and like I said, there's a wide range of things that count as what you could call invisible disabilities. Um, yeah. So there's lots of different things that we're helping. And, and, and I think a lot of times you don't even realize that you're dealing with it. Um, you know, I've had dyslexia my whole life and I just, thought I was a slower reader than other people. I just thought, I mean, until somebody actually diagnosed to say, oh my gosh, you have this thing where your brain works differently. Um, you, you don't even realize it. Right. And, and so then all of a sudden you can kind of take the necessary steps to say, okay, how do I overcome this? And obviously with somebody like me who has a career in, in media, uh, and movies and television shows and, and lots of sports stuff, um, Obviously, I compensated with creativity um, and, and, and in the way that I do those kinds of things where I don't have to read as many things and I don't have to do that. So, um, yeah, there's lots of different ways that I think that people adapt and adjust to learning that they've got some type of invisible disability and to move forward, understanding more of maybe there are accommodations that need to be met and maybe you need to you know reach out to an HR department or you know, if you're at a university and you're a student, they have different things that you can, um, you know, apply for that, those accommodations. And that will help you through whatever it is that you're doing. I have a good friend, Jess, that has dyx dyslexia. And she has asked me whenever I commu communicate with her to, instead of texting her, I, I had been texting her long texts and she said, I can't read that. <laughs> she said, yep. just, you know, just text me a voice text, like, right. you know, do a voice message on the, on the phone. And so that's how we communicate is we, we do that back and forth. And it's really fun anyway to hear each other's voices because she's in South Carolina and I'm in, 
uh, North Dakota. And then also, Jess, I have another good friend that uh, deals with uh, multiple chemical sensitivity sure. and that's a invisible disability and she she knew i was doing this uh interview with you jess and she said would you please ask him uh to talk about if you can jess if you could talk about multiple chemical sensitivity because i've had even more people say to me i uh i can't go to this event that has a lot of people because i can't risk being exposed right. to maybe, you know, strong perfumes or something. And so if you could talk about multiple chemical sensitivity, and then the second thing, Jess, she, this good friend says, what are the most common challenges for people with IDs? Sure. Well, I, I can address that one right away. The most common challenges that again, you look good, right? You look fine. And so that there's assumption that since you look fine, nothing must be wrong. And, and that's the biggest fallacy that there is. Because again, there, um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, any invisible disability might, it might go in waves where one day you feel fine, one day you literally can't get out of bed or whatever's going on, or something can strike you immediately. I mean, the chemical sensitivities and, and allergies is a good example. You know, say you're walking through a store or you're sitting in church or, you know, or you're at a concert or something like that. And somebody comes in and they have either, you know, a lot of cologne on or a lot of perfume on that can literally overwhelm your senses and kind of sh start to shut things down. So, um, yes, there's there's different things that obviously if you're in a work environment, you might have to ask for your desk to be moved or to you know, be in a different area or something that might be near a more fresh air resource kind of a thing. Um, I mean, ironically, people don't realize that chemical sensitivity is part of the ADA regulations um, for Disabilities Act, where yes, they're supposed to provide some type of um, accommodations that help you get through that, whatever that might be. And I will say that, you know, if there's a good thing that came out of COVID, what it did is it proved that a lot of people can work from home. And so that tends to be one of the biggest advantages for people that live with any kind of disability is that hopefully the employer can understand enough that you could still work from your house and, and remain safe in your own environment. Hey, Jess Stainbrook is my guest today on Just Say It. And Jess, I want to ask just a few minutes we've got left in our uh, time together. And this has been so uh, informative and so uh, just enriching. And I, I deeply appreciate you uh, spending time with me and, and the uh, viewers today. Um, right. Je and it's, it's again, people, uh, sometimes you're dealing with stuff, you don't even realize it. And so that's why yeah. my biggest, uh, you know, statement would be, hey, go to our website, invisibledisabilities.org and there's all kinds of resources there to talk about a lot of different things to help you out and move things to the next level that that you get through some of the invisible disabilities yeah. that you're living with yeah i'm going to put that uh the uh, the website up on the screen one more time Great. and you know i think one of the one of the don't you wouldn't you agree that one of the ways to help just people friends family co-workers be more aware of invisible disabilities is to get that card and 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 I would talk about that again, Jess. And then just in the fine, final moments, if, if there's anything that we haven't talked about it today, then the, here's your opportunity to just say it. OK, sure, for sure. Well, you asked about the card again. And again, the idea behind the ID card is that we as the people who live with invisible disabilities have the ability to be the first voice, maybe the first contact that somebody might understand what this symbol is all about and why it's uh, being recognized as the symbol for indis invisible disabilities around the United States and around the world. Um, again, if you get this, you have the ability to wear it. And if somebody sees it, you know, sometimes you might get on public transportation and you might need a seat. 
Um, and so that's a, a way that you can inform people. We also have little cards that you can get that say, hey, here's what invisible disability is because a lot of people don't know, right? So again, along with the symbol, along with you you being kind of the voice up front when you meet somebody, um, obviously we're starting to do a lot of different training and marketing around this when the legislation gets in place so that people recognize it um, as an official symbol when you would get it on a government ID. So there's lots of different ways like that to be involved and active and kind of the front lines for what we're doing that helps everybody that's living with any kind of invisible disability. Um, one of the things, for instance, that we're working on, um, we're starting the pilot in the state of Ohio is, you know, um, you can get, if you have a disability, a recognizable disability or, or even an invisible disability, um, you can get a placard that might help you with parking. Now, I will say that this doesn't offer any special privileges. It's just to raise awareness, right? It does have some information on the back where there's a QR code that, it, you know, let's say you had epilepsy and you had a seizure. Well, somebody could scan that and it would help them. There's also an emergency a contact number with a, a, the name of someone here. So that helps with these cards as well. But the point is to say in Ohio, what we're doing again around the placard, that if you get a disability placard um, that helps you park in, in a disability space, you know, the blue one is for permanent, the red one is for temporary. Well, now where they're creating an orange one that recognizes people that have an invisible disability. And a lot of that comes about because, you know, I don't know if you if you have a placard and you've parked in a parking spot and you've walked out of your car all kinds of people get angry about that and they might leave you a note or they might yell at you or swear at you. And, you know, we've even had law enforcement officers pull up behind people and say, hey, I just saw you walk and get in your car. You don't have a disability, but you do. Right. So, again, we're trying to take steps that that help people understand that just because you can't see it doesn't mean there's not a disability at, at play there. Right. Well, I think it's wonderful how how the the awareness there's there's more awareness coming about. It just takes time and takes people like you, Jess, and and uh, and your organization, the invisible. It's invisibledisabilities.org. dot org. Yep. And also, I would encourage folks to also go to your go to YouTube and check out your Invisible Encourage Invisible Encourage live uh, podcast on YouTube. I checked it out yesterday for a few minutes and it looked like a great program too. Yeah, we have about 40 of those. We try to do, you know, at least one a month and every couple of weeks, sometimes one will come out, but a lot of different topics. Some of it's about, you know, there's law firms out there that will help people with social security, um, the SSDI disability insurance access and things like that. Um, work at home options, different things like that. So there's a lot of things that our podcasts uh, go through to talk about uh, different ways to support people that are living with invisible disabilities. All right, Jess Stainbrook, Vice President, Executive Director of Invisible Disabilities. Thank you so much for your time today, for helping us to uh, get this information out. And I'm gonna put you down in the green room and uh, can you, uh, well, if you can hang tight for just a moment, but I know I, you're a busy guy and have a beautiful day there in Colorado. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Great being on your program. Thank you. Jess Stainbrook with Invisible Disabilities. Folks, if you or a loved one or a friend uh, is uh, dealing with this, just go to the website for more information, in, invisibledisabilities.org. Check out uh, his podcast on YouTube and um, share, share this video as well. Share this podcast as well. Thank you for joining me today on Just Say It. I'm D. James. God bless, and you have a great day. I'll see you next time on Just Say It. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>